Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. Today I want to show you a great project for using up all those random balls of wool that you've got left over from other projects that aren't big enough to do anything sensible with, but they're too much to throw away. What you can do is you can make mats and bowls which are really, really sturdy. You can make them in any colour you like, you know, you can get pastels or brights or shades of green and blue. And this is how we do it. Get about six colours of yarn that coordinate. Get all the ends together and just tie those ends in an overhand knot, like so. And you can leave quite a long tail on it. Grab your reading glasses so you can see what you're doing. And I'm using a four mil hook. And what you want to do is pick one of these colours of yarn to start with. Start here. You know when you can't remember if you're left or right handed when you crochet? Ah, now I can. Take the tension up on one half of it and simply, I'll show you that again. Grab the yarn with your hook, put the yarn over and slip it through. So you're binding these other five pieces of yarn with the colour that you've chosen. You want to try and keep the tension on the, the working yarn, but also you need to hold on to this bundle of yarn at the same time so it doesn't get in the way. It can get quite fiddly to start with, but once you get the hang of it, your main problem will be just making sure that you don't get your yarn bunching up. So you're effectively running a line of half hitches, I think around this yarn. Now make about 10 what we in the UK call double crochet around here. If you're in the States you'll call it single crochet. Push them up together, check that the yarn that's inside the core of it, as it were, is, is all, none of it's hanging out. And then, here comes the clever part. Bend it round. Oh. And just DC into the work that you've already done to make a loop, like so. Take your yarn core again, and this time what you're going to do is you're first of all going to put your needle into the top of that double crochet that you've made. Under your yarn core, grab your working yarn and pull it through and then turn it into a double crochet. And for the first few rounds of your bowl or mat that you want to make, you'll need to work two double crochets into each stitch of that ring, just like you would do if you were working in the round and you were making a granny square or something like that, because obviously as the diameter of your circle increases, it uh, you're going to make a circle that's twice the diameter of the one in the ring, so you're going to need twice as many stitches. So again, put your hook into the top of your double crochet, under the core yarns, grab your working yarn from behind, bring it through, and then wrap around the core yards, yarns to bind them into position. And then when you want to change colour, put all your yarns back together, pick another working yarn, let's go for the purple so you can see the contrast, and again, oh, work in and around. Try not to make this too tight. The temptation as always with crochet is if you're concentrating on something, sometimes you, you end up holding it so tight that when you come to your next row of stitches you actually can't get the hook in there. 
So if you can keep quite a loose tension, and once you've completed that first ring, the whole process becomes so much easier, just like with any crochet. My biggest bugbear is, you know, working a, a line of double crochet into your foundation chain. Always seems to take longer than the rest of the whole project. We'll just do these two stitches here. And every now and again, just check the back and front of your work to make sure that the yarns in the core are not hanging out of the back. This is also the way that you would tighten up your stitches to make a bowl. Just pull the core yarns and it will suck the stitches in. So it's almost like pottery. You, could, you can shape a bowl as you like. Don't be tempted to cut this end off. This is your knot that you had at the beginning because what we will do in a minute, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I won't show you how to do that in a minute. I haven't got a darning needle in order to do it. But you can just keep working through and working through. And if you've got lots of odd ends of yarn, you can simply join them, join them here, and then just work it into the work, leaving the long ends free, because what you will do is you'll weave them in at the end on the inside of the bowl or the underside of your mat for a neater effect. And that's exactly what you'll do with those yarns at the very beginning of the work. You'll undo that knot and then weave those in ends into the underside of the work just so you have a neater finish. When you come to completing your project, because I'm not going to sit here and make the entire bowl, because you just want a quick demonstration. You don't want to sit here for the next three or four hours. And realistically, once you get the hang of it, you can make a bowl or a mat quite easily in the space of an evening. When you want to come to making the top of the bowl and, and reducing down, um, how can I explain it? You don't want to stop dead with five core yarns because you'll end up with a, a lump at the top, like you would with any work. When you're working in the round and you're not actually moving up a row, you're just working in a spiral. So what you need to do is, for example, just chop away that orange yarn and then work the threads over them and the core will naturally decrease in thickness when you run out of that orange yarn that you've chopped away. And you'll continue to do that as you do the work until you are left with your just crocheting around one core yarn. And when you cut that away, you'll then just be crocheting into itself, uh, into the, the line of double crochet and it will just form a much smoother top and then you can just finish off with a slip stitch like, like you would normally on any project. Oh. So that you can complete the top of your bowl or the edge of your mat without it looking weird and lumpy. As I say, this is one of those projects that you can pick up and put down and it, you know, you can do one in the course of an evening but I'll just show you what I mean by the tightening effect if you wanted to shape this work into a bowl. Let's just do a few more here. So if you've got the work like this, if you now pull these core yarns, you will instantly tighten up the edge of your work so you can form a bowl, you can form you know, tall cylinders, and, and there's, there's all kinds of shapes that you can make on that spiral. But equally, if you want to make something like a mat, make sure that your work is not too tall. You can see on the back there's no lumpy bits of yarn hanging around. All I've done is in the last row is I've, I've just increased the tension on the stitches just so it forms a lip. So you could use it as a change tray on your dressing table, or you can use it on a bigger effect. You could make a shallow bowl with sides as a bread basket. The main 
issue that you will have with this project is the six balls of yarn that you have to one side. And every now and again, you'll have to give them a good old shake out because they will get twisted. If you're lucky enough to have yarn, ball, yarn bowls, like the bowls that you have here, but they've got like a little nick in the side of it to run your thread through, that will keep them under much more control. But uh, even if you just pop them in a plastic bag by your feet so they don't roll across the floor while you're working on them and the cat can't get to them, you can do this very easily. And it's a, a brilliant way just to use up all those bits of yarn that you don't really know what else to do with. So there we go, we'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I hope that's given you some ideas of, of ways to use up your stash. I'm always looking for ways to clear the odd bits and pieces that I've got in my house and make something usable out of them. And these are definitely very usable. Pop threads in them, all kinds of things. We will see you next time on the Crafts Channel. Um, but until then, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by the Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.